We're in here. Because my daughter has no voice. She was murdered last week and she was taken from us. Shot nine times on the third floor. Now, we, as a country, failed our children. This shouldn't happen. We go to the airport. I can't get on a plane with a, a bottled water, but we leave it. Some animal could walk into a school and shoot our children. It's, it's just not right, and we need to come together as a country and work on what's important, and that's protecting our children in the schools. That's the only thing that matters right now. Everyone has to come together and not think about different laws. We need to come together as a country, not different parties, and figure out how we protect the schools. It's, it's simple. It's not difficult. We protect airports. We protect concerts, stadiums, embassies, the Department of Education that I walked in today that has a security guard in the elevator. How do you think that makes me feel? In the elevator, they got a security guard. I'm, I'm very angry that this happened, because it keeps happening. 9-11 happened once, and they fixed everything. How many schools, how many children have to get shot? It stops here with this administration and me. It's, I'm not going to. I'm not going to sleep until it's fixed. And Mr. President, we're going to fix it because I'm going to. I'm going to fix it. I'm not going to rest. And look at my boys need to live with this. I want to see everyone. You guys look at this. Me, I, I, I'm, I'm a man, but to see your children go through this, bury their sister. So we. That's what I keep saying this, because I want it to sink in, not forget about this. We can't forget about it. These, all the school shootings, it, just, it doesn't make sense. Fix it. Should have been one school shooting, and we should have fixed it. And I'm pissed, because my daughter I'm not going to see again. She's not here. She's not here. She's at... In, in North Lauderdale at whatever it is, King David Cemetery. That's where I go to see my kid now. And it, it stops. We all work together and come up with the right idea, and it's school safety. It's not about gun laws right now. That's, that's another fight, another battle. Let's fix the schools, and then you guys can battle it out whatever you want. But we need our children safe. Monday, tomorrow, whatever day it is, your kids are going to go to school. You think everyone, everyone's kids are safe? It ha I didn't think it was going to happen to me. If I knew that, I'd, I would have been at the school every day if I knew it was that dangerous. It's enough. Let's get together, work with the president, and fix the schools. That's it. No other discussions. Security, whatever we have to do. Get the right people, the consultants. It's our, these are our commodities. Man. I'm never going to see my kid again. I want you all to know that. Never, ever will I see my kid. That's how I want it to sink in. It's eternity. My beautiful daughter, I'm never going to see again. And it's simple. It's not, we could fix it. This is my son, Huck, who, who's have to deal with this, too. You have something to say, son? Um, I, ju I just want to add, um, it, it's imperative to the safety of everyone that um, to support the free market and, and the free flow of ideas and, and the, and listen to, to people on, listen to radical opinions on both, both sides. And that's how we'll find solutions. You, you let people battle it out in a free flow of ideas. Censorship has got to stop. And that, that's, uh, that's how we find the solutions, by listening to everyone, be having an open mind. My son Hunter. How are you? I'm Hunter Pollock, class of 15, Marjorie Stoneman Douglas. I walked the same hallways where Meadow got shot and all 16 other victims. First off, I want to thank Mr. President for having us. We had a very effective meeting before we walked in this room. 
Mr. Vice President as well, and Madam Secretary. I put all my trust into them and my father that together that we'll be able to find a solution. And that's all I have to say. Thank you for having us. My name is uh, Sam Zeif. I'm a student from Marjorie Stoneman Douglas in Parkland. And uh, I just want to take a second first to thank you for having me, Mr. President, Mr. Vice President, Madam Secretary. Um, I was on the second floor in that building, texting my mom, texting my dad, texting three of my brothers that I was never going to see him again. And then it occurred to me that my 14-year-old brother was directly above me in that classroom where Scott Beagle was murdered. <sighs> Scott Beagle got my brother in the class. He was the last kid to get back into that class. And uh, I'm sure a lot of a lot of you have read my texts on the internet with my brother. I didn't plan for them to go viral. I just wanted to share with the world because no brothers or sisters or family members or anyone should ever have to share those texts with anyone. And that's why I'm here. I lost a best friend who's practically a brother. And I'm here to use my voice because I know he can't. And I know he's with me, cheering me on to be strong, but it's hard. And to feel like this, it doesn't even feel like a week. Time has stood still. To feel like this ever, I can't, I can't feel comfortable in my country knowing that people have, will have, are ever gonna feel like this. And I wanna feel safe at school. You know, senior year and junior year, there were big years for me when I turned my academics around, started connecting with teachers, and I started actually enjoying school. And now, I don't know how I'm ever gonna step foot on that place again or go to a public park after school, or be walking anywhere. Me and my friends, we get scared when a car drives by. Anywhere. And I think I agree with Hunter and Huck and how we need to let ideas flow and get the problem solved. I don't understand. I turned 18 the day after. Woke up to the news that my best friend was gone. <laughs> and I don't understand why I could still go in a store and buy a weapon of war, an AR. I was reading today that a person 20 years old, walked into a store and bought an AR-15 in five minutes with an expired ID. How is it that easy to buy this type of weapon? How do we not stop this after Columbine, after Sandy Hook? I'm sitting with a mother that lost her son. It's still happening. In Australia, there was a shooting at a school in 1999. You know, after that, they took a lot of ideas, they put legislation together, and they stopped it. Can anyone here guess how many shootings there have been in the schools since then in Australia? Zero. We need to do something, and that's why we're here. So let's be strong for the fallen who don't have a voice to speak anymore. And let's never let this happen again. Please, please. Mr. President, 
Mr. Vice President, Madam Secretary. Um, my story is far too well known. Um, I had two sons who were at Sandy Hook School. Uh, my eldest, who was eight at the time, survived, and my six-year-old son, Dylan, did not. And I have been working tirelessly on this issue for over five years now. Um, the organization that I help lead, Sandy Hook Promise, is very focused on keeping kids safe at school because no parent should go through this. Every parent who sends their kid to school should know without any question in their mind that they're going to be coming home that day. This is not a difficult issue. You're absolutely right. There are solutions and this administration has the ability to put them in place. And after Sandy Hook, they said, this, we wouldn't let this happen again. And yet it has continued to happen for five years. How many more deaths can we take as a country? How many more teenagers and six and seven year olds can we allow to die? Don't let that happen anymore on your watch. There are things that you can do right now. Um, mental health, you mentioned earlier, funding for that would be very much appreciated. The Stop School Violence Act, enabling prevention programs and reporting systems in schools across America. It's already passed through the House. It's in the Senate right now. Urge swift passage of that. That can get a lot of help to schools. I absolutely agree. Since Sandy Hook, there has been an increase in school safety and security. We've invested a lot in the bricks and mortar of our schools. We've invested a lot in the security of our schools. I think we also need to focus on prevention. How do we prevent these acts from happening? How can we help identify and get help for people who are at risk of hurting themselves or others before they pick up any weapon? That's what we need to focus on by preventing these acts. And you have the ability to do that. There's legislation available to you right now. There are free training programs, such as our Know the Signs programs, available across the states. Right now, you could mandate these sorts of programs. You could ensure that schools, students, and educators are trained how to recognize these signs and to know what to do when they see them, and then to ensure that those tips are followed through. This is not difficult. These deaths are preventable. And I implore you, consider your own children. You don't want to be me. No parent does. And you have the ability to make a difference and save lives today. Please don't waste this. Thank you. Mr. President, Vice President, and uh, Mrs. DeVos, thank you for inviting my wife and I to be here today. I'm a little bit weak. I had surgery last week, so I'm kind of weak in voice and body. But 19 years ago, uh, <clears throat> I went through what some of the folks here are going through now because my beautiful daughter, Rachel, uh, was killed. And my son, Craig, was in the library that day. Two of his friends were murdered beside him. He, he lay there covered in their blood, looking down the barrel of two guns aimed at him, and he knew he was going to die. And a split second before Eric and Dylan pulled the trigger, the alarm system went off and it distracted them and they never came back to the table where Craig was at or I would have lost two children that day at Columbine. So my heart goes out to you, sir, and to every one of you in this room that have experienced the trauma that you've gone through at Parkland. Uh, our focus has been, my, my beautiful wife, the most beautiful lady in the room is right there in the blue and white blouse, Sandy. We started a program called Rachel's Challenge, and it was started a year after Rachel died. And we have worked with some wonderful partners over the last few years. We work closely with Chuck Norris and his wife, Gina, in a program they call Kickstart for Kids. Uh, we work with Bill Ripken, Jr., uh, Cal Ripken Jr. and his brother Bill, and have created a program for athletes called The Uncommon Athlete, and it's based on something my daughter wrote in one of her diaries. We partner with Dr. Robert Marzano, who's one of the top K through 12 researchers in the country, and a program called Why Try, All Dear Friends, and another program called uh, uh, Love and Logic, Dr. Jim Fay, one of the largest uh, parenting programs. 
all of us combine our efforts together, our organization has reached over 28 million students in the last 19 years, and we have seen seven school shootings prevented. We see an average of three suicides prevented every single week of the year, over 150 a year. I have a little book with me uh, that I'd like to leave with you. It's got letters from students. Uh, we don't edit them. Uh, these are emails from students who are planning to commit suicide. And we see three of those every single week, students that have changed their mind. And uh, if you don't mind, I, I, I just want to share one simple principle with you that we've learned over the years as we've worked with millions and millions of young people. And it comes from something you said last week in your speech, and it was that we must create a culture of connectedness. We must create a culture in which our, our uh, classmates become our friends. That's something we've learned how to do over the years. We have over 28 different programs, and we see children connect with one another. Every single one of these school shootings have been from young men who are disconnected. And uh, we talk a lot about the mental health issues, but it, it actually goes deeper than that because there's a lot of mentally ill children that are kind and compassionate. And so we, we work with those children every single day of the year, of the school year, but there's always the one with the propensity to violence. And so one of the things we have learned, and we train young people and we train teachers, that the focus must not be just on unity or diversity. Because if you focus too much on diversity, you create division. If you focus too much on unity, you'll create compromise. But if you focus on relatedness and how we can relate with one another, then you can celebrate the diversity and you can see the unity take place. I'm all for diversity, I'm all for unity, but the focus really needs to be on how can we connect. And that's something that we and our organizations have learned. One thing we have learned is how to connect students with each other, with themselves, with their teachers, and with their parents. And I, I would love to share more uh, as we have a chance to do so. Thank you again for having us today. This is an incredible group of people that we really do appreciate it. Uh, some of the folks in the back and some of uh, my friends sitting right back here, I'd like to have you say a few words. We can learn a lot from you. We want to learn everything we can learn, and we're going to go, starting about two minutes after this meeting, we're going to work. Because this is a long-term situation that we have to solve. We'll solve it together. And you've gone through extraordinary pain, and we don't want others to go through the kind of pain that you've gone through. It wouldn't be, wouldn't be right.